Hello and welcome to TIFO Transfer Rumours Analyzed. I'm Joe Devine and I'm now joined by JJ Bull. There he is giving you a little wave. Today we'll be talking about five different transfer rumours that have appeared in the media over the last few days and uh, we'll be taking it a step further to analyse whether or not they would or wouldn't be uh, good things that might happen. Now, just to clarify, we don't know if any of these things are going to happen or not. All we have to go on are the reports from these various media outlets here. Uh, these uh, analyses are hypothetical at best. But enjoy what could happen or maybe won't happen in the future of your football team. Okay, the first one, JJ, is uh, Denis Sakaria potentially to Arsenal. There we go. It's very exciting. The Mirror have reported that Denis Sakaria is apparently up for leaving Gladbach, uh, where he is right now, and Arsenal could be interested. Now, tell me about this, because they've already bought one midfielder from Belgium. Yeah, Sambi Laconga. Yes, they have. Sambi! There he is. Um, Sambi's lovely. He's a six. We talked about this in one of the other videos. Uh, Thomas Partey they've already got, obviously. There's a bit of noise now that Jack has moved to Roma to hit a stumbling block. Oh, really? They don't have the money. Oh. He's, he's, he's like 17 million or something. Right, like okay. Um, but let's talk about the boy we're talking about. Zakaria. Zakaria. What are we call them? Zakaria, Zakaria, I think. He is Swiss, um, which is nice. Yeah. And he plays as either a six or an eight. He is fairly, he's a decent passer. He loves a good progressive carry of the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he plays a six and eight, and he's uh, sort of dynamic. He would fit in the midfield three, probably. He could play as a part of a double pivot, if you want to call it a pivot. I don't know if he's a pivot, but um, as in, I don't know how much play goes really through him. Uh, he played in the Euros for Switzerland. He had a game against Spain. He also came off the bench in another game. I can't remember who he played against, but he's played one and a half, well, one game and 24 minutes, roughly, yeah. um, in the Euros. He's someone that Alex mentioned in the Sensible Transfer series a couple of years back as a player who might be entertaining this sort of move in, in the future, maybe uh, injury trouble set him back a little bit. Yeah, um, I think he was highly rated, you know, remember two, three, four years ago, yeah. and it's starting to come through now. Uh, but he would be fine this kind of three here. Like if Arsenal play this 4-3-3, you're thinking about and have Smith throw on the left and maybe Sack on the right with a forward, uh, he'll just be in amongst here. There's not really a huge amount of tactical difference he'll make to them, but he's going to give them a lot of defensive balance in this midfield, mm -hmm. which might allow for Tierney and maybe Chambers, I don't know, when they go up the pitch. Yeah. It's going to give a bit of midfield stability uh, in here. Silly had Zakaria and Party, Bright lights and movement and does lots of things. He's, yeah. he's an action man. He's a carrier too, isn't he, Party? I mean, that's one of the things about Partey yeah. that was, uh, you know, press breaking not so much with his passing, well he can do that, but also by being able to beat players. I mean, if Zakaria yeah. can do that too, it's quite, it was quite nice, isn't it, the idea that you might have Sambi with the ability to make those long passes, Zakaria and Partey ahead, both capable of carrying the ball. That is uh, uh, that is a bit of a change from what they've had too recently. Exactly. Sambi can make all these sorts of passes, these long range passes, whereas Partey and Zakaria can make these sorts of runs to carry the ball where they need to go. Looks a bit messy, mm. but I'm sure uh, certainly pirates would understand what this means and be able to locate the treasure on my board. <laughs> Can I say uh, I like a player like this because who scored has uh, three strengths, lists three strengths for Dennis Akaria, and they're a kind of unusual combination, perhaps not so much these days. Dribbling, very strong, but also blocking the ball and tackling. Strong. I like a player who can do both of those things, a, a sort of defensively minded player who can carry the ball. Yes, I also think... Dynamism. Ars yeah. That's what they say, isn't it? Uh, some people do. I mean, you don't know what Arsenal are going to do with the other midfielders. We've said this before in another video, um, which are available on our site. Maitland Niles is an option they've got. Joe Willock might be going somewhere. El Nenny's another one who's more of a defensive midfielder. It doesn't offer quite so much. It's not so easy to, to, to man mark or, or constantly be aware of the one central midfielder on the opposition team who can take the ball past you. If you've got two players, suddenly it perhaps changes entirely the way that an opposition might set up against you. Also, just for building a squad, you want players who can step in and cover. And So even if uh, Zakaria wasn't a, a starting player every single week, it means you've got someone to cover for party who's been injured yeah. quite a lot also. Um, if Zaka goes, you've got cover for that. If Elneny is going to play and he's injured, then you've got someone else to come in for that as well. Uh, I think it'd be a decent squad addition um, with potential to be quite good now and again. 
Yes, please. Mm, next one uh, is uh, City Players in Exchange for Kane. Now, this one comes from 442, the magazine, the excellent magazine 442. And uh, the, uh, the reporting here suggests that Manchester City would be prepared to uh, consider including one of Gabriel Jesus, Riyad Mahrez, Bernardo Silva and Raheem Sterling in some kind of exchange deal, plus cash for Harry Kane. Now, however likely that is, we're unsure. There's been various different reports over the weekend about the likelihood of Kane moving. The Times were reporting that Kane is increasingly confident of a move, we can say. There are other outlets uh, reporting that it's unlikely to happen. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. But if it did happen, we thought it'd be interesting not to look at Kane at City, but to look at the possible exchange players at Spurs, because there's four options there. A bit of fun, isn't it, JJ? Yes, here are the players mm -hmm. that we've mentioned. I mean, the straight swap you'd think um, would be Gabriel Jesus, because he's a forward. Mm -hmm. So that would be what you do. And that'd be him in the Spurs lineup there. That's how that looks. Mm. But uh, I think the best player they would be able to say, I mean, uh, Raheem Sterling's really good, right? So if you brought Raheem Sterling in, Mura, people like Mura, but uh, Sterling might give you a certain speed. Sure. Everyone knows how Sterling plays. He's very quick. He can keep playing as 4 3 3, or it depends how the manager wants to play. Um, but Sun can play as a striker, bring on Mura again. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the best signing they could make would be Riyad Mahrez because he's amazing. Yeah. And you can play Sun here, and then like we said, we've got Mura as the option, you can play on this left side. We've got Brian Hill too, of course. Oh okay. yes, Brian Hill. He can come in here as the left winger. Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine he'd play an awful lot of games because he's been expensive in a swap for Lamella. Sure. Um, but Sun can play as a centre striker. It would mean they probably need to bring in another forward, and there was a bit of a link with Danny Ings or something like that, possibly yeah. to play alongside another striker. But yeah, we don't know exactly how Spurs are going to play yet because we've not seen enough in pre-season sure. to know. Now I have to say, uh, uh, of the other uh, transfers that we've mentioned over the last few, these seem to be the least likely, but it is quite fun to see what they would look like in that Spurs team. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I saw a player exchange no. happen in real life. Yeah. And, uh, but, and, and the thing with, with City is that... Well, I guess it just happened with Hill and Lamella. Oh yeah, well that's true. Um, the thing with City is that their team has been very successful, but it's you go through cycles and they could do with freshening up the team even yeah. though like even though how good Jesus is how good man is Silva Sterling are um, if you uh, freshen up and get rid of them to bring in someone like Kane it, it gives you a new version of your team sure and they might prosper going somewhere else as well even if they're not going to compete at quite as high a level yeah I mean straight away they're not in the Champions League or even the Europa League I think yeah um, and they're certainly not competing for the title so I don't think the City players would be awfully keen on it but, uh, yeah. It's nice big stadium, plus the cheese room. Cheese room. The stadium is brilliant. Yeah. Mm, I'm sure. Me too. Me yeah. too. Me too, green button. Okay, next up. This is an interesting one. Um, the Mail have reported that Brighton are possibly going to make a £20 million move for Celtic forward Odson Edouard. And I thought, it's a, there's a player who plays in Scotland. You must know everything about him. Uh, yes, I know exactly who this guy is. Good. He's great. Um, really talented forward. I would say he's less of a nine and more of a sort of nine and a half. Mm. So like a between a ten and a nine. Sure. Because he takes up deep positions. So let's say... And does he set people up too? He does a lot. Yeah, a lot of yeah. link play. His, his strongest... The, the thing he's best at is linking play, especially in tight passing moves. He's mm -hmm. very much a Graham Porter kind of player. Mm -hmm. Now, if he were to play, I think he would come in for Moppy. A very do you mean Mope? Do I want to say Moppy? You keep calling him Moppy, Moppy like he's a cartoon mop. I do mean Mope. Mope. Yeah, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Eduard, um, or Broomy, as I like to call him. Uh, Eduard is, yeah, so, we see, so he's a French striker, he's young, um, very highly rated in Scotland. He's been top scorer in Scottish football for, I think. For the last two seasons, he's been the top scorer. There you go. See? That makes sense. With 22 goals and then 18 goals. So, uh, Graham Potter's teams, he likes creating diamonds all over the pitch. So, he plays that 3-4-3. Three, three. Look at all the diamonds I'm drawing. I like these diamonds too. So, all Potter's teams have lots of diamonds in them. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like the kind of couch upholstery that you'd find in your grandparents' house. That's what the, the football tactics are mostly based on, mm -hmm. is old furniture. Yeah. And uh, this guy's a new piece of furniture. Sure. He's going to brighten up the room. Yeah. 
uh, in that he will score. So the thing with um, Mopey mm -hmm. is that he uh, his XG is always quite high. Yeah. Expected goals uh, is always quite high, but he tends to undershoot it, as in he misses an awful lot of chances he shouldn't do. Well, yeah, because I was surprised that you took him out of the team because a, a, a layman myself, I thought he was supposed to be fantastic. I see him a lot on match of the day highlights. But he stuff, is good, but, yeah. yeah. The thing, like he's really good, but he misses a lot of shots. So the thing with Brighton last season, had they scored the amount of goals they probably ought to have, according yeah. to various statistical models like expected goals, and they'd be much higher up the table than they were. They would have won the league. Uh, no, no, not the London League, but they would London League, League. They would finish much higher. They're not scoring the chances they're creating. They're creating chances. Uh, Gross is a player who creates a lot of chances. Solly March, good left foot. They've got lots of people who can create. But, uh, Mope doesn't score the goals he should do, although he gets in the chances. You think he's doing something right? Yeah. Um, Edward does score. He scores the chances that he gets. Yeah. He also helps create a lot for others. This will work very well with someone like Welbeck, in that. When Welbeck wants to get into this sort of nine position, it means that Edward can drop into this sort of say, a bit like uh, Firmino at Liverpool, yeah. which will then give license for someone like Welbeck to run in behind or Trosser to run in behind. If they're trying to keep an eye on him, we'll highlight these guys. This is his job here to look after him, and he's a nine here. He does this at Celtic a lot. Edward should be wanting to get into these positions, but what he often does is just drop back. So this guy's not sure whether to go for him or not, mm -hmm. and while he's not sure, sort of creates a bit of like uncertainty in these guys and then these boys come in behind. Sure. If that makes sense. This is not yeah. an exact science, but that's the sort of thing he does. What you're but, saying is that he is a value off the ball. Um, 100% yes. His movement is one of his best. So his first touch is phenomenal. His first mm. touch, um, his awareness of things around him, his ability to link play. So when Brighton do move up and with those diamonds we were drawn earlier, um, he will help link up very quickly, fast passing moves that Brighton want to play. Does it really only cost £20 million to buy the two times in a row top scorer of the SPL? Yeah, the players aren't valued very highly because it's not perceived to be a very competitive league. Mm. But then, I mean, Celtic have dropped a little bit. They were competing in Champions League a few years ago. Now they were in the Europa League, so you'd think its stock's dropped lower than it has done. But I guess it's just the supply and demand economy of the market. Like, Celtic can't really turn down £20 million for him. Yeah. Although I think Tierney, what did he sign for Arsenal for? It was something... I can't remember. Mad, like was 25 it? million, say. Yeah. Um, but he's one of the best left backs in the Premier League. He is very good. If Arsenal were to sell him, he'd be 50 million easily now, sure. probably. I mean, that might be hyperbole. hyperbole. Okay. Um, but that's the thing, it's just whatever players are worth. I mean, Virgil van Dijk was clearly like top drawer yeah. when he was at Celtic before as well. 13 million pounds. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And he went to Liverpool for 80. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's the difference there. Uh, okay. Ed Edward's uh, worth every penny of 20 million. I like it. I like Graham Potter. I like Brighton. I'm excited. Let's move on. I like this, yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, the next one is uh, Joachim Anderson to Crystal Palace. Now, the Mail also again have, have reported that Palace are closing in for Lyon defender Joachim Anderson. Who's that then? Uh, he is a Danish central defender oh. who was on loan at Fulham last season from Lyon. Yes, please. Um, and what he's very good at is making long... Uh, passes from deep. He's, like okay. a ball, he's a very much a ball-playing defender. Sure. And he's a known quantity within the league. Yeah, he was linked with a lot of clubs last season. I think teams like Arsenal, Spurs. Really? A few of them are yeah, linked with, but we then... Sure. We can link up with a team with anyone just now if we want to. And it counts. Do you want to...? Uh, Milovojevic to Real Betis. Oh, a link first heard here. There you go. It's done. Yeah. Now, uh, so... We don't know how Patrick Vieira is going to line up, so we can't put 12 players on the pitch yet. He definitely can't do that. Lazily, you can assume he'd be a bit like Arsene Wenger's teams because he played for him for so long. Yeah. But his teams, the consistent thing in them is that they tend to have a lot of possession. Right. Now, Roy Hodgson's Crystal Palace did not have a lot of possession. No. They've also got rid of a lot of players by letting the contract run down, like Andros Townsend has gone, for one example. Yeah. And then... Um, Turnover. Maybe there's uh, uh, opening up a lot of uh, space in the, in the wage bill. I think that's probably what it is. And they also want to improve the standard of player that they have. Yeah. And some of those are getting on a bit. I mean, but the Townsend's still a good player, for example. Sure. But I mean, they, they look at what... I mean, Horton's done a very good job to keep them up. And now they're trying to change how they play. And it looks very much like they're going to be possession heavy. Um, from friendlies, I, I might be wrong, but it looks like they might be trying to line up with the back three. Um, mm -hmm. Possibly a 3-5-2 Because yeah. Zaha has very much seemed to have moved from being a wide player To being a striker who moves into wide areas um, And one of the signings that makes me think that this might be what they're doing Is uh, Michael Olise of Reading mm -hmm. Who is uh, meant to be like a central attacking midfielder yeah. um, I'm sure he can play different positions 
But if we take MacArthur out here, um, so if they line up with this kind of 352 that's more of a 3412, the way this can works with Palace uh, is that, and we'll come on to Anderson in a second, is that uh, Benteke can move into the central position here, then Elise can move to this sort of position here as a three, so has here, and then you've got your wing backs can come up and give you this attacking five. Mm. And then you've still got the defensive stability of having like Milovojevic and Riedewald or whoever plays in the midfield with a central three. Now, the players I've got here is Guehi, is a new signing from Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Really highly rated young centre back. Yeah. Um, Kiati, who I, I like as a player, can play midfield as well, but he's played as centre back most of the time. I think Schlupp's played there a couple of times for them, especially in pre season. Sure. But he's left that really, or a winger. We've seen that uh, uh, full backs convert into back threes if there's one of the three has a bit of pace and can get about and has some defensive sense. Yeah, it gives you an option to overload. So you can do things like uh, this three here, three and a two. The Schlupp can move into underlap as a sort of attacking midfielder here sure. just to help gain an overload. And then you've still got the two and you've got a box essentially, mm -hmm. as in the box is here. Now that's my box. That's your box. Box midfield, yeah. yeah. A lovely, lovely box. Incidentally, uh, Elise there, um, described by Alex Stewart as mint. Mint. So, yeah. You know. I've only seen some uh, highlights sure. and read things about him. So yeah. I, I, I can't see him play a full game, so I can't tell you too much about him because that would be unfair. Do you think one of the defending spots could be for Anderson? Yes. Yeah. Now, from this position, uh, this is what he does. He plays these passes all of the time. Nice. Is he'll just look to spring like a wing back. Mm -hmm. And it gives him an option to get out from the back really quickly. So they're going to be a possession team. They can do this move up the pitch, and then start building from these sorts of positions. Well, Zaha pitch. will love that, for example. Yeah, uh, you think so? Yeah. But then, yeah, because Zaha is basically a striker now who can move into wide areas. It's mm -hmm. not exactly how they're doing, I and mean, we're not, we've not seen enough of them in pre-season under Vieira yeah. to really know how they're going to play. It could be totally different in the first game of the season to how their pre-season's gone. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like it. Yes, please. Okay, last but not least, uh, Joe Willock, back, we should say. Newcastle because of course Joe, Joe Willock was on loan at Newcastle from Arsenal last season and uh, Sky Sports uh, reported over the last few days that Steve Bruce reiterated Newcastle's desire to take Joe Willock back to Newcastle next season um, but are awaiting a, a decision from the player for his future. Um, I just was curious, uh, we've obviously already seen him there and from what I remember he was Pretty good at Newcastle last year. He was great. He scored eight goals mm. last season. That's many goals. Yes, and they need many goals because Newcastle's team is not looking hugely strong. I'm pretty sure they'll be stuck in relegation battle again next season. Sure. Uh, Bruce has said he needs midfield reinforcements really quickly. The options they've got right now for central midfield: Shelby, Hendrick, the two Longstaff brothers, um, Isaac Hayden, and Matt Ritchie could play there if you want him to. They basically need more. They, they need more and better, mm -hmm. um, although I quite like the long stats. Shelby's got a groin injury just now as well, so he won't be sure. fit for the start of the season. And Hayden's glowing. Hayden's glowing, yes, but he's a defensive mid. Sure. So um, what, what Willick does, so Willick's more of a box-to-box, -box, um, he's either a box-to-box -box midfielder or an advanced playmaker, and he plays a 10 mm -hmm. or an 8. Mm -hmm. um, Newcastle switched a few different systems last season, I wonder whether we'll see them looking like a 5-3-2 uh, again, or 3-4-3, or, or three, three, whatever we call it. Let's put in um, Fernandez here. Um, actually, Sharp will be there, I think, like this. Um, yeah, so this is one of the ways that they could line up. That's too many players, so we'll take out Ryan <laughs> Fraser, maybe. <laughs> Almiron, take him out. Sure. Almiron can get over here. And then you put in Wilson and Fraser here. And then Willick, in this situation, would probably place Jeff Hendrick. Is here, but then you'd have to very much hold his position because when you've got two protecting the three, you can't sure. really do that. And when one of them's uh, John Joe Shelby, you have to take extra care. Yeah, because Shelby's going to ping long passes from deep sure. and launch into tackles. Yeah. Like in that old FIFA game where you could do the hard tackle thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's look more at what they could actually do because they've often played Fraser as a second striker or they've played St. Maximin as a second striker. Yeah. Now this is an option and you could play Fraser even at wing back if you want. But see, like, let's put Hayden in. I'm just making this up. I know he won't start every game, but Shelby, Hayden, and Willick. Mm -hmm. And from this position, you've got St. Maximin, like we were talking about Palace earlier, St. Maximin can run into the wide areas um, on either side. You can play off the left or the right. Uh, hugely difficult to play against. Has improved slightly his distribution and his shooting. That's the thing that lets him down is his final action. He can tear a defence apart, mm -hmm. but then doesn't do an awful lot with the ball. 
Yeah. Although he does change games for them, and I think their expected points drops dramatically, or points one drops dramatically when he's not on the, yeah. on the team. Now, Willick here can play as a sort of 10, but also an 8, so they've got a 5 3 2 essentially across here. Lots of defensive stability. Then you've got some Maxman and Wilson can play however they want. Kraft can play as right wing back, maybe. Lewis here. You could get rid of Kraft and put on Fraser, like we said, to right wing back, something sure. he's done for Bournemouth before, and he's done it for Scotland as well. Uh -huh. So, yeah, Newcastle don't have a great team just now, and they need a lot of. Like, Willie could be the bare minimum of what they want to bring in. Yeah. And that he scored eight goals last season, especially when, I mean, Wilson can't be relied on for everything they're doing. And, so Maxim and was injured for a big, big portion of the season. Exactly, yeah. And then Joe Ellington is... Uh, he's not the best footballer I've ever seen. Sure. Um, he, he, he can do some things fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but Willie could be hugely important for them just to avoid relegation. I, c I can see them being in a bit of trouble next season. Okay, well... Yeah. I don't want trouble for Newcastle. You no. Know, but you do you want Joe Willock there? I'd love to see Joe Willock back there, but we'll have to wait and see. Because these, of course, were rumours, and we've analysed them, but that doesn't mean anything. So that's the end. So this was all a waste of your time. Everything is a waste of your time. Thanking JJ and thanking me. We'll be back again in a few days. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.